Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Friday morning here in Australia, so I'm doing an early one today. Market is up over 2.4 trillion, so jumped up 1.5%. So things are looking quite nice at the moment. Bitcoin dominance dropped ever so slightly. Must have got up over 45%. There we go. A little volumes down a little bit, but you know, that's not uh, too much to worry about. But I mean, have a look at the price here on Bitcoin. It's holding above that kind of $57,500, getting oh so close to 58000 quite nice. Good Lord, look at the ETH gas prices. They are absolutely insane. And I think a lot of that has to do with this $5, 5.38% uh, it has jumped up. So getting again ever so close to that $4,000 level now, not too far off. So, you know, I wouldn't touch ETH with anything at the moment, uh, as in transaction wise. I mean, I'd buy it because it looks like it's getting ready uh, to go into price discovery. It's not too far away, not quite there yet. But wow, those gas prices are just ridiculous. And I mean, climbing. This is the problem with Ethereum. The the, the true Ethereum killer is the gas fees. They need to get that sorted. ETH 2.0 cannot come quick enough. That has literally priced out everybody. $43 for a basic transaction on Ethereum. You try and do a smart contract on Ethereum right now, that is going to be hundreds of dollars. That is crazy. Come on, Vitalik, and you know everyone else over there at the Ethereum uh, network. Let's get this fixed because that is just, yeah, it's horrendous. It's unfortunate, but hey, look for the actual price of Ethereum. Again, it's it looks like it's getting ready to go. And we'll have a look very shortly at the actual chart. But let's have a look at the markets in total. All right, it's basically a green day. Not too many things are down. Polkadot down a little bit to be expected. It had a pretty good pump. Uh, Ada down ever so slightly. So what's performed the best in the last 24 hours then? In the top 100, what's the biggest movers? Oh, Telcoin, nice. Axie Infinity making more moves. Near Protocol, so we got a number of double-digit movers. None over that 15% is what I really like in the 24-hour sort of mark, but, you know, not too bad at the same time. Look, even Synthetics. Synthetics seems like around that kind of $9 mark seems like a pretty good point to get in, but we need, we need to wait and see. I haven't bought any Synthetics uh, in a while. It's just really been struggling. It's not to say I've given up on it. I haven't sold uh, my Synthetics. I'm holding on to it. But it looks like that $9 point uh, seems like a good buy-in. Uh, and I'll do some chart analysis on that over the weekend. But look, green, uh, looking pretty nice. Only a couple of double-digit moves, which is surprising considering the overall market is up 1.5%. But look, any gain's a good gain. So on the flip side of that coin, what hasn't performed so well, though, in the top 100, considering the market is up? There we go, Olympus down 8%. They had a bit of a pump before. Uh, Komi, Shiba Inu, again, you know, retracing. Uh, that's the danger that you play with in these kind of meme coins. And I don't want to say pump and dump coins, but that's kind of what they are. You know, they'll pump up really hard and then they'll retrace. But again, I don't think this has come down to where it was about a week and a half ago. Anyone who was in a week and a half ago, uh, they are still significantly significantly up. It went over 100% in a matter of a week. Kasama down a little bit. Uh, same thing, you know, it got a bit of a pump with the polka dot news. Look, the losses, pretty minimal, hardly anything at all, and the gains, pretty nice. All right, so let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So this is what I want to have a look at. Look at Bitcoin. It is now just testing those upper limits. It's really trying to have a crack at that $58,000 mark at the moment. The problem is, it's the weekend. And are we going to see the kind of somewhat traditional weekend retracement? So do we get to about sort of 58,000, then the weekend comes and again, we've got to come back down to, you know, 55,000, 54,000 or something like that. That's what I'm waiting to see. But at the moment, it's looking nice. But this is also happening of a night over in the stateside time. So uh, Asian markets are likely starting to get in and trying to pump the price up a little bit. Maybe even the Australian markets, which kind of fall in the Australasian area. So I guess we might be considered some of that. So yeah, not looking too bad at all. Looking like it's trying to break out. Now let's go over to Ethereum though. 
Ethereum has broken out. We were just trapped around this kind of $3,500 level. We were really struggling to break it. And we've only gone above it a couple of times and it's when we hit those all time highs and then we really had a, another sort of crack at it, but it was a failed crack. And now have a look at it, boom, pumped right up. So same sort of thing though, can Ethereum hold? And what I most like about Ethereum is I showed this the other day. I wanna go back to Ethereum sort of where it's been its average trend line since its inception. Have a look at this. To me, it looks like it's under fair value at the moment. Have a look what happens when it starts to pump. Boom, now this can be invalidated. The, the, this line will not always hold. At some stage, things will change. But at the moment, this just looks like it's undervalued to me. But you could start a new line from over here. So the everything crashed back in March of 2020. And then maybe you've got to run it through, uh, through there, which would be, it looks like it's just a little bit over its fair value. So again, this line isn't a 100%, but based on you know the entirety of the time, it's not looking too bad. So what we can do, though, is we could get another line and we could basically sort of try and run it through the middle here and get as many touch points as we can. And up, there you go. It looks like it is a roundabout sort of fair value thereabouts. Again, you can move this down ever so slightly and say maybe it's a little bit oversold. But for me, I want to get as many touch points as I can. And to get as many touch points as I can, we're going to go a roundabout through there. It still looks like it's under fair value. So for me, I think Ethereum is looking pretty nice. Again, overall for the long term sort of value, but also even just the short term, we finally have that breakout that we have been sort of waiting for for a while. Again, we were really struggling at that kind of $3,500 level, and now we have a clean break above it. So looking nice. Now, a couple of stories I want to get onto. Whale games continue. So third largest Bitcoin whale sold at $56,000 and is bought back in at $57,000 a day later. You gotta ask yourself, why would a whale do that? And one of the biggest whales, it's because it's mind games, it's trading games. They are trying to shake people out. And if they just wanted to get out, why would they buy back in the next day? Because it literally is a shakeout. If you haven't, you know, if you haven't finally got it through your head, and this is never financial advice, it's always just my personal opinion, but Bitcoin, and not just Bitcoin, but cryptocurrencies as a whole, not all cryptocurrencies, as a whole, the space, are being widely adopted. Now, not by governments and things like that yet. We're still yet to get to that place. But, I mean, people are just piling into this. Millionaires, billionaires... You know, big businesses, hedge funds, they see what's coming. They're getting in early and they're going to play these trying games. They're going to try and play these games, sorry, to shake everybody that they can out. They want you to panic sell so they can buy this stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. They're not buying it to simply hold on it, hold on to it forever. Anyone who says they're going to buy it and never sell is not being honest. Some, like maybe Michael Saylor, won't sell, but I can't see him not selling ever I just think he's not going to sell a lot. Everyone's going to take some profits at some stage to do other things. So that's what you need to remember. But oh, this is total whale games. Again, why would they buy at 56,000 and they sold 1,500 BTC, uh, yeah, 1,500 BTC worth about 80 something million dollars to then buy back in for another thousand dollars per Bitcoin. That's got to tell you something. That's mind games going on there. Now, I'm quite sure that 1,500 Bitcoin is not that much to this whale. This was literally just a scare tactic. I couldn't imagine they're going to go, yep, no, this is the time to sell, and then change their mind the next morning, go, oh, no, I shouldn't have done that, so I'm buying back in. I mean, that just, you know, it's possible, but Bitcoin whales have generally been around a while. And if not in the crypto space, just in the whole investing space. And it just, it feels like a game to me. It feels like this was a, a specific move by Bitcoin Wow to try and shake people out.
but only time will tell. But that's what I'm picking up from that. Hence why, you know, I, I bit, I bit, I bit, I buy Bitcoin, and I generally do just hold. I will absolutely take some profits in the future, but I can tell you right now, 60 to 70%, if not maybe 80% of my Bitcoin, I literally won't ever sell until, you know, again, Bitcoin gets to a point where, you know, it's kind of leveled out and not just that, then there's something better to invest in. Now, a lot of people say, oh, there's all these altcoins that are great and they're way better. They don't have the history that Bitcoin do. So yet yeah, there's lots of altcoins and I'm invested in plenty of them but I am not putting the kind of money that I've put into Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin, in my personal opinion, never financial advice, is the safe bet, still with massive upside. People are saying that Bitcoin's going to 100,000. Well, it's only 58,000 right now, so it's basically gonna double. And they're all expecting it to do it in the next few months to maybe a year. You show me a stock that's gonna double uh, in the same amount of time. I'm not saying that there's not stocks that will do it, but yeah. Crypto, it is that apex predator. And, you know, I, I agree with what Michael Saylor says to a point about Bitcoin. It's the it's the safest in that bed. But, I mean, crypto, again, the gains that can be made in here are just crazy. But highly speculative and highly dangerous. You can lose it all. Hence why I like to play it safe in this, you know, more dangerous game of crypto. Hence why Bitcoin makes up one of my biggest positions. Now, it used to be my biggest, but Ethereum has performed so well that it just took over. And I will be selling some of my Ethereum as well. But there are some coins that I'm just not going to sell a whole lot of. Ethereum's one, Bitcoin's another, and probably Matic is another, and ADA's another. Don't get me wrong, I'm selling a bit of all of those, but I won't be selling mass amounts. Matic, I may sell up to 50%. ADA, I may sell sort of 40, possibly 50%, I don't know. But they're coins that I just think have real long-term viability, so I plan on holding them, again, sort of long-term until something better comes up. But in saying that, there's plenty of other coins. Right, I've gone on a bit of a tangent. Let's move on to the next story. Billionaire Barry Sternlich, hopefully I've said that right, bought Bitcoin and Ethereum for inflation protection. Now, what's interesting is a lot of people... Particularly, you know, retail think oh, I'm never going to be able to compete with the big guys. That's not true. You absolutely can. Now, can you compete on when they buy and sell and how they trade? Maybe not. That's the hard part. But you just have to be able to have common sense thinking. Because look at why he bought Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin is a financial tool that can help against the mass printing of fiat currencies. Any man out there, any woman child even children know about this stuff and that it's going on so you don't have to be a genius to know why to buy it unlike traditional government issued currencies the digital asset has a predetermined maximum supply of 21 million to ever exist again that's not information that only you know the smartest people in the world have this is all information that is out there for everybody we all know that there's mass printing of fiat currencies going on most of us and you just have to do the tiniest bit of research into bitcoin will know that there's only 21 million bitcoin ever to exist that is the reasoning why people are buying so you don't need to be some kind of expert you don't need to be a you know a billionaire or a millionaire to know why to buy it anyone can get this information that is out there now trying to beat them in again when to buy and when to sell and all the rest of it yeah that's going to be a lot harder they're pretty smart people and they've been around for a while but the reasoning why to buy it and then also the reasoning why to sell it is there something better is it the right time and all the rest of it are you just taking some profits to you know invest in something you know hopefully of equal sort of value again that doesn't take geniuses you don't need to be the smartest person to know those kind of things that information is out there so do what the billionaires are doing do what the millionaires are doing they're simply just using common sense on why to buy it again the whole when and how much and all the rest of it that becomes a little bit harder but i don't consider myself the smartest person out there whatsoever but i'm buying bitcoin and cryptocurrencies because i can't find a better investment that's why i'm buying and because of the mass printing of currencies the whole, you know, when to buy and when to sell, you know, do a little bit of chart analysis and all the rest of it. And particularly with Bitcoin, if you generally hold for four years, even through a bear market, now again, the cycles can change a little bit, 
but you're generally way up. So again, you know, the whole timing thing, that is a hard part, but there's a saying, time in the market always beats trying to time the market. It's trying, trying to time the market is hard and you generally need to have been around for a little while to do that. Now, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of people that time the markets pretty well and can make a whole lot of money and I'm gonna try and do the same with some of it, but generally I just plan on buying and holding. That is my biggest strategy. All right, this is interesting. Putin has come out and said cryptocurrencies can one day serve as a unit of account. He was sort of very anti-crypto and was you know, making it very hard for people in his country to invest in them and things like that. And now he's come out and said that he thinks that they can one day become a unit of account, i.e. similar to uh, you know, a legal sort of form of tender and things like that. This is big. I'm now waiting to see if President Putin is now going to do something with cryptocurrencies in his country in regards to regulation and all the rest of it. I'm sure they have some kind of regulation, but will, you know, will they come out, will Russia now come out and be a whole lot more crypto adoptive, particularly considering he can see what's happening in other countries? Very interesting. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe not. He can still kind of stay in, uh, on the sidelines and he's probably buying a ton of it for himself, just not making it quite so easy for the rest of people in Russia. I know they had some rules and regulations about who could buy it and trade it and things like that. And it wasn't real great for the residents uh, of Russia. But, you know, maybe he's going to change his stance. And, you know, a lot of governments are like that at the moment. And they'll, you know, have certain laws on their people uh, and a lot more. Uh, friendly ones for you know their friends and things like that all right more fud though morgan stanley ceo says crypto isn't a fad which is good though not seeing much client demand not seeing much client demand and it's just going up i find that hard to believe we've heard this before from uh jamie diamond come out comes out and says the exact same thing we're just not seeing much demand they are trying to fud it. They're trying to push the price down and scare on, scare everybody. There is a ton of demand for this. And retail isn't here. Like the big kind of part of retail, those, you know, anyone who's not an institution is what they consider retail. So we're here, but the retail FOMO isn't here yet. All the people that don't really understand what they're doing and just jump in at all time highs and think it's, you know, gonna continue to go on forever that's not here so the demand that we're seeing at the moment is generally people who've been around in the space for a while and you know you're going to be one of those eventually if you stick around like an og as they say and institutions it is the institutional demand that is pushing it at the moment slowly yep more and more retails coming but this is more institutional driven than anything else and he's coming out and said oh we're not seeing much demand though that is simply a tactic to try and make people think that the big business, the big end of town aren't here and aren't interested. So why would you want to put your money here? Be careful of things like this. Now, Mexico has come out and said that they won't adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. I think that's not going to last forever. I think all countries eventually, maybe not legal tender, but they absolutely will allow it to be used uh, as a form of trade and things like that. What he has come out though and said his government isn't interested in Bitcoin and is more concerned about tax evasion. Look, fair enough. And what you got to remember is uh, Mexico, the government, you know, they're trying really hard to improve their relations with America and things like that. America don't want Bitcoin uh, as a, a legal tender. They want the US dollar uh, and you know Mexico is highly reliant on the US dollar. So I'd say this is more about kind of falling in line and not trying to uh, annoy one of their biggest uh, partners and you know their neighbor. So I think that's more what's going on there than anything. All right, a Canadian city plans to supply residents heat using Bitcoin mining. I've spoke about some of this before. I think wherever there's excess energy in the world, you're probably gonna see them move towards mining Bitcoin through that. But also they're going, you know, you can just set up Bitcoin mining and they're gonna use things such as the excess heat and that, uh, you know, to help heat places, particularly in colder parts, you know, in colder climates around the world. This is the move forward for Bitcoin. Number one, green energy. Number one, using excess energy to mine more Bitcoin. And then again, you know, if you're just outright mining Bitcoin, then that excess heat, if you're in cold places, again, use it to help heat, uh, heat you know, 
parts of the country and things like that, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of innovative things that are going to come from not just Bitcoin mining, but you know this whole crypto space in general. Every it feels like almost not quite every day, but yeah, every week or so there's something new coming out. There's so much interesting stuff happening in this space. All right, what I wanted to do is uh, I did say a while ago that really I was waiting for Bitcoin to kind of break out number one above here before I would start to look in altcoins, and really kind of around about this fifty-eight thousand dollar level is when I would get you know as certain as you can be that yep where this is not a dead cat bounce and again i don't think it's a dead cat bounce but i still have that you know little thing in the back of my mind saying it's still possible but again we break above fifty-eight thousand. i think we're going to quickly get up to start testing new all-time highs and i said that's when i'll start to look at altcoins again until then it was just bitcoin and a little bit of ethereum so i want to show you that a coin that i love and have been watching for quite some time so matic this is the price history of matic since it came out pumped up and look at this just traveled sideways for such a long time sideways 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 imagine being in matic for this long now i got into matic somewhere around about sort of here i think march yeah after the you know crash of sort of everything and again it just actually i think i got into it i don't know but i know it was uh down for quite some time but basically traveled sideways from may 2019 to let's say around about november 2020 so a really long time it traveled sideways and then boom had this big move now have a look what it's doing now we can say around about sort of here sideways 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 against the dollar just traveling sideways i think this is going to be something very similar to this there is a lot going on at matic there's always new partnerships they took over hermes network for uh for the roll-ups technology and things like that i am super bullish on matic i really like what they're doing and this is something that i'm going to start to put more money in because this is sideways action this is basically nothing's really happening people have gone pretty neutral on it it's not dumping it's just traveling sideways let's have a look at it against ethereum very very interesting again traveled sideways against ethereum made its move up fell down a little bit come up had its big blow off top and now look where it is it's dropped a little bit lower than what I thought, but that's okay. Now look where it's sitting, and I haven't drawn this line in. Basically some old all-time highs. Now this could definitely go lower. Maybe it's got to come down to here. You're never going to, again, pick the exact bottom, or if you do, it's going to be more luck than anything. But for me, it looks like it's getting to the point of sort of exhaust, exhaustion of the sellers. I don't think there's going to be two more sellers anymore. And people are still buying because it's having little upticks. So for me, I'm looking at Matic. And here's the last one that I want to look at. And I've been following this one for a really long time. This is against Bitcoin. Had its big blow off top. Came down. Set a low. Has played around here. Has come down. Uh, it failed this test. Now look where it is right now. Old resistance support sitting on it. Now again, this could go lower. Maybe it's going to come down to here. And maybe it's going to come down to here and retest an old all-time high. But for me, I'm just looking at what's the risk. The risk is it could come down to one of these levels. Look, if Matic gets down to here against Bitcoin, an old all-time high, I will be putting a lot of money, not that I have a lot of money, but a lot of the money that I have into Matic at this level. I'm already going to look to start to buying it right now because I think another move like this is coming. Again, when the altcoin season really starts to kick off and again, look at the ETH. Oh, they just dropped a whole lot there, $11. But again, that's still a basic transaction. You go to Polygon slash Matic, it's cents. It's only sense to do uh, transaction fees on there. So for me, I think this is going to have another big explosion. So that's my pick. Matic is my pick. That's the altcoin that I'm really looking at to put more money into. Have a great day. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train. Things are looking good. And I'll see you next time.